If you're new to programming and you want to get started working with command line on a Windows computer, I recommend using git bash. The advantage of git bash is it uses Unix based commands. And these are a style of commands that you're going to see across a variety of different platforms. Mac computers, Linux computers, a lot of web servers use Unix based commands. Uh, in short, they're pretty universal. And this is in contrast to uh, if you were using a Windows default command line program such as PowerShell, that's going to have a whole different set of commands. Now, if you only ever plan on doing Windows specific development, you might want to dig into PowerShell. But if you're doing general programming, I do recommend getting familiar with Unix based commands and working with a Unix based command program like Git Bash, just because it's going to be more ubiquitous. A lot of the guides and tutorials you're going to find online are going to be using these commands. And so you're going to want to know how they work and how you can run them on your computer. So that's the why. Let's get into the how. You want to go to gitforwindows.org and click the download button. This is going to download an installer for Git, which is a version control program, which isn't the focus of this video. But the reason we're downloading this is because the Git bash program that we want to use is bundled as part of this software. So we have to download all of it to get this specific program. Once the download is complete, locate it in your downloads folder. You should see the installer. I'm going to double click it to get started. I'll click yes to grant access to the installer to work on my computer. And then I should see a series of installation screens. The first one is just showing me the general public license. I'll click Next. Here it's telling me where it's going to install Git. I'll click Next again. On this screen, it's asking which components we want to install, things like additional icons on our desktop and some other shortcuts. Uh, you can skim through the options, but I'm just going to leave them all as the defaults and click Next. Here we can customize how this program is going to look in our Start menu. And once again, I'll leave it as the defaults and click Next. Next, it asks for the default uh, text or code editor to be used by Git. Uh, and again, this video is not about working with Git specifically, but to the extent that you do work with Git, it would be useful to have this point to a code editor you're familiar with. So just go ahead and look through the dropdown and find a code editor that you're comfortable with. In my case, I typically use Visual Studio Code, so I'll choose that option. Click Next again. Here it's asking for the default name to give to Git repositories. And again, this is Git specific, but I am going to recommend we override this and choose the second option. We're going to use the default option of main. That's just the convention we uh, typically use in the world of Git nowadays. So we want to set that there. I'll click Next. For our path environment settings, I'm going to leave it as the default, which is the second option. This is just going to dictate where we have access to the Git command line program from. So the default there is good. Uh, and really, for the next set of screens, I'm just going to leave them as the default and power through this. A lot of this stuff is related to Git, not applicable to what we care about with Git Bash. So let's just proceed quickly by clicking Next through these uh, several screens. All right, now it's going to begin the actual install process. So I'll give that a moment to complete. And on the completion screen, I'm going to check the option to launch Git Bash and uh, uncheck the option to view the release notes and click Finish. And then here we go. This is the Git Bash program. So let me minimize some of my other windows so we can focus on this. Now, the purpose of this video was just to introduce you to Git Bash and show you how to get it up and running, which we've done. But let's wrap things up and just go through a basic uh, Unix based commands just to get a feel for what it's like to work in a command line program like this. Um, the first thing we can observe is we see what is called our prompt. Uh, this gives us information about uh, the user we're currently logged into our computer as, as well as our current directory. Uh, and at the prompt is where we can start issuing commands. For example, let's say I want to change from my current directory to my desktop. I could use the cd command or change directory. And then our desktop is in our home directory. And a shortcut to our home directory is this tilde forward slash. So following that, that should get me to my home directory. We want to go into my desktop. All right, so now you can see my prompt is updated. It shows that I'm on my desktop. If I run the list command, or ls for short, it's going to show me the contents of my desktop, which I don't currently have anything there. Uh, let's create a directory uh, in the desktop. I'll do that with the make dir command, and I'll just call it demo. All right, so now let's run the list command again, and we now see that demo directory was created. Uh, let's go into that demo directory. So again, we'll use the cd command, or change directory, and go into demo. Our prompt now reflects that. We're in our home directory, desktop, demo. And to create a uh, file within here, there's a couple different ways we could do this. Uh, I'm going to use a command line based text editor called nano. So I'm just going to say nano, and we'll say example.txt. 
That's going to change our interface a little bit. We're now in the nano interface. So we can uh, enter some basic text here. I'll just say hello world. And then to save our changes in nano, we have a series of keyboard shortcuts we can use. So I want to exit. So the shortcut for this is our control key and the letter X. So I'm going to hold down control X. It's going to ask me if I want to save my changes. I'm going to type the letter Y and then hit enter to confirm the name of the file, which is example.txt. And then just to confirm that uh, that worked, we can use a command called cat, followed by the name of our file. And that's just going to show us the contents of that file. And there is that hello world string that we added. Uh, if we wanted, we could edit it again. So once again, we'll just open that up with nano. This time, instead of creating it, it's going to be opening an existing file. There's our existing content. And let's just make an edit. I will just add an exclamation point at the end. And once again, to save it, I'm going to do control X followed by the letter Y, followed by enter. If we wanted to delete that file, we could use the remove command. So that's just going to be RM, followed by the name of the file. Or if we wanted to delete this entire directory, what we could do is move out of the directory. So I'm going to say CD, and I'm going to use the dot dot forward slash shortcut. That's just going to move us one directory up from where we currently are. All right, so now we're back on the desktop. And to remove demo, I'm going to say RM but I'm going to include a dash R flag. That's short for recursive. Anytime you are deleting a directory, you need to include that recursive flag to make sure that not only the directory, but any of its contents are deleted. So we're going to remove our demo directory, and then we can run the list command to show the uh, contents of our desktop just to confirm that that's no longer there. And with that, that's my quick and dirty crash course into some basic Unix commands for working with directories, files, that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to dig deeper into this, I do have another video on just command line basics. I'll include a link in the description to the specific timecode in that video where we actually get into uh, commands. At the beginning of the video, it's more about setup for your command line program, which you've already done in this video. So you'll want to jump right to the instructions. And then uh, if there's any questions about working in command line or if you ran into any complications with getting Git Bash set up on your computer, feel free to leave a comment below.